about who his dad is, wherever his dad went. Uh, he wasn't feeling well. Okay, good. So, uh, I always say this, I start everything out and I say this is like, I never know what to say when I'm here. I don't bring notes, I don't prepare, mainly because I don't like to talk to people, I prefer talking with people, and I think the government needs to do better with talking with communities about the problems that they face. The government oftentimes is throwing money at stuff, and I'm honestly tired of it. The inefficient spending has to stop. I think I'm the only candidate right now that said unequivocally I'm against property tax increases. We need to stop inefficient spending first. And so I think that's something that is setting me apart is the fiscal responsibility that I do represent. You know, everyone talks about bringing in jobs and my whole goal is revenue. I want to make money. Our revenue has stayed pretty stagnant over the past few years, let's say a few years, um, and we're not making as much money as our spending increases are, and so we really need to change that. Um, I, I'm looking to get rid of the entertainment tax to bring entertainment back to our city because that's really hindered in money and visitors and real revenue coming in, dollars. You know, if you grow your tax base, you never have to raise taxes, and that's kind of the goal. Um, you know, I can talk about some of my other views. Uh, affordable housing, Randy, we'll talk about that one. I agree. Uh, the big thing for me is right now our city offers tax breaks and TIFs and pilots to all these developers. Look at Walmart on the strip. It left. There's no jobs being provided. There's no space being provided. There's nothing. Yet they've got a tax break. They've got a TIF. My goal is for us to let communities vote, not force recode on them. I, I was the first candidate to stand up and say I can't stand recode. I don't like what it represents. I think we should allow communities to vote if they want affordable housing units in their community, whether it be ADUs, duplexes, triplexes, or a complex. If they vote yes, I believe they should be allowed to have a property tax break. Let's incentivize our communities to address the problems rather than our city just throw money at issues and hope something sticks. Homelessness. You know, we've got the day park. It's scattered homeless people all over our city. I've said for a long time I've been looking at a lot of models that cities have and one of my favorites is Albuquerque and Fort Worth. They do this thing where the city government actually drives a van around and that day they ask people, hey, do you want to go work today? And what they do is they start to give people purpose and community. I think purpose and community can change a life. I think housing first is important, but purpose and community can really change someone's life. And so what they do is they pick them up in a van, they take them, they clean up parks, they clean up whatever it is that the day of activity is, whether it be mowing or something like that. It gives them purpose, it gives them community, it gives them a reason to wake up in the morning. I'm tired of us devaluing people based on their social statuses. We need to be better about loving our city as a whole rather than a select few, and that's what I believe wholeheartedly. Um, I don't know, what are some other issues, Daniel, that you've heard me talk about? <laughs> I have a lot of stuff that I've been working on a lot. Um, I study the budget every single night. I have it downloaded on my phone, so every night in bed I study line item after line item to see where we can improve. Um, there's a lot of inefficient spending. You know, we spent $151,000 on a public art mural. I, I will stand up and say, I love public art. I think it makes cities beautiful. What I don't love is paying an artist from Seattle, Washington to come into our city and then take our taxpayers' dollars back to their city. I have an issue with that. That has to stop. We need to invest in our communities and invest in our city. Because my goal is to make Knoxville the blueprint for the Southeast and hopefully the country. I want cities to come to us and be paying our citizens to go to their city and bring their money back here. I want that to start happening. You know, we pay all these people to come in and do uh, surveys, yet we pay people from out of town. You know, we've got someone in, coming in to, uh, I think, survey Chihuahua Park soon, if they haven't already. I'm pretty sure it's an agency out of Boston, and they wouldn't come during the fair. That's probably the biggest use for that property, if I'll be honest. Uh, our city doesn't utilize that. Um, I'd love to see actually Booms Day come back and turn it into a weekend long music festival to bring in people, bring in money, give people a reason to stop in our city. Right now, 11.3 million people go to the Smoky Mountains every single year. Yet yeah, they'd rather spend a day at Tanger Outlets than come see our home. And I take issue with that because I'm proud of where I'm from and I love this city. And I think that everyone I've ever known to even swing through here has fallen in love with who we are because we're a big city with small town people and we need to start to market, brand, and strategize and bring in money rather than just constantly send it out. So that's kind of who I am. The campaign slogan I've been with is people over politics. I'm trying to put people in communities first. Um, something else that's kind of different about me is I grew up in North Knoxville, went to Northwest. I went to high school in West Knoxville at West High School. One set of my grandparents lived in South Knoxville, right off Martin Mill. And my other grandmother lived in Northeast Knoxville and worked on Magnolia. I grew up in every part of this town. I've watched every part of this town, some grow, some not. I have an understanding of the 
diversity that we represent as a city, and I have a respect for the struggles. I've been at rock bottom, and I've fought my way to the top to work for myself and be where I'm at. Um, my current career is I actually work with, you know, multi-million dollar companies on their branding, marketing, and strategy. I create revenue for big businesses. That's what I do. Um, and I think that, you know, people oftentimes are talking about, oh, I've met with this person, oh, I've met with that person. I've actually been meeting with employees, not CEOs. We need people who are less connected. We need someone that's willing to stand up for all of us, not a few. And so for me, that's who I am. I, I'm not gonna piggyback off of who my father is. We disagree on a lot of things politically, and that's okay. We need to have people with differing views, but the thing about me is, is I'm willing to work with you all. Um, someone asked me recently what I thought we should do with Chill Howie Park. I paused for a second and I said, I don't live there. Huh? No, not necessarily. I said, I don't know. I don't live over there. I'd love to talk to the community and see what they would like to have done. Because we need to listen. Uh, I've actually proposed, you talk about the raises in the city government. The mayor just got a $20,000 raise last year. Um, and you might like this. I've actually already personally promised to take that money and uh, start to personally pay for after school programs with the entire $20,000. I want kids to have an opportunity, and as a city, we can't do a lot with schools, but I can personally do something, and say, here's what I'm doing, who else wants to help? Because I think we need a government that sets an example and precedence. You know, we say we want good paying jobs, great paying jobs, benefits, all this stuff, yet our city doesn't offer that. We need to set precedence and an example. Um, I'm actually, you know, everyone's riding around with police officers. I'm, I'm, I've, I helped build the jail. I mean, I blew up the dynamite for the shooting range, the, de the detention facility. So Monday, I'm going to ride around the city with brush pickup because I want to know what some of these people are dealing with in their daily lives. Because to me, those are um, kind of like replaceable jobs in most people's eyes. They're not that important. But if you're willing to wake up every single morning, and excuse language, but pick up people's crap off the side of the street to make Knoxville what it is, there's value in that. We have to do better. We have to treat our citizens better. We have to treat our employees better. You know, $150,000 to an art project could have gone to a great pay raise for some of our police officers. Rather than take it back to Seattle, pay to send the tax money there, and now their government pays their cops better. It's illogical answers to all these problems we're facing rather than sitting down and going, what can we do better? It's like, hey, let's just try a bunch of random stuff and hope something works. You know, we need to bring back those tax breaks for people who are willing to offer affordable housing units. Um, we need to, honestly, the way I'm looking at it is if a renter some, or a, a, uh, an owner wants to rent their property out, if they make their property uh, energy efficient to address KUB issues, or if they want to put solar on top, I think they deserve some incentive. We should incentivize them addressing the problem rather than just throwing all this money into an affordable housing fund. We need to be intentional with our money. And I think that's the basis of this office is really understanding how to be more efficient, um, understanding where we overspent. And lastly, I'll tell you the other thing I want to do is the first year I'm in office, I want to ask every single citizen their top five priorities they want to see their tax dollars go. At the end of the year, I want us to compile all of that, and our city will have a direct map of where we're falling short, where we're overspending, of what our city is concerned about. And oftentimes, because I, I support bike lanes, bike paths, greenways, I'm actually looking at an optional tax system where people could opt in. So you know 100% of your money will be going to that. No longer will the city go, hey, we're taking more money and we're gonna spend it on this even though you don't want it. Um, I'm looking to give control back. Uh, people need more control where their tax dollars go and the city needs to be more responsible with your all's hard earned money. I work for myself and taxes suck. They do. I mean, you buy a car. If I buy my car today at the lot, I pay taxes. But if I sell it to you, you pay taxes. But if you sneeze in it, I'm sure there's an extra tax for that. Like. So, but that's who I am. Um, if you have any questions, sure, give them, shoot. I figured Randy would have one. Mia, Mia, go ahead. Okay. Now, I, I, I try to listen to the people that I ride the city bus, and I've seen several buildings and houses, dilapidated, blighted, blighted properties. Would you consider trying to renovate some of those and making um, transitional housing for homeless people? Um, I don't think the city dollars should go to that, but I do think there's a way we can work with someone who's willing to make that change. Um, but also, if someone already owns the property, we have no control over that. That's a big issue. We can't just steal someone's property. I'm all about property rights. That's one of the reasons I don't like RICO. Um, 
so it, it's really hard for the city to just go, hey, we're going to take this and do this with it. Um, so if those people are willing to do those things with their property, I'd love for the city to work with them and partner with them and make sure that we don't leave any gaps in the system. Casey, do you have a question? No, question. 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 No statement. Question. It's got nothing to do with affordable housing. Okay. Living my best life, man. Entertainment tax. Yep. What are we referring to? Are we referring the to the ticket hotel, tax. Motel tax? The ticket tax. Uh, Victor Ash did it in the mid 90s. He raised the tax on bands. It's called amusement tax. Yep. So, so, and how much do we take in on that? Uh, not as much as we should because bands stopped coming here. So, we don't we don't have a ballpark number of what we. I mean, I no. So the, the the original pitch was basically we'll get bigger bands in, make the same amount off of less people coming in. What happened is bands were like, why would I go there to pay that when I can go to Nashville and pay this and have a bigger audience? Okay, but right now we we don't have a clear I, number because I can go look it up for okay. you. The music so, industry in in Tennessee is a 5.9 billion dollar industry with over yeah. 59 thousand jobs. Knoxville represents like 12. And and I don't want 11 million people coming to Knoxville. Well, if they stop for one meal, it's just local money into local economy. That's the goal. It's not to have them staying here vacation here. I don't want to change who we are as a city. I want to make us a better version of ourselves every day. So I don't want those 11 million people to stay here. I want them to stop here and buy a meal, buy a, a, a shirt. I want them to give money into our local economy. So what is that tax right now dedicated to? What does Music. the city use that it's, it's an amusement. So I don't know. Our city wastes so much money that I don't know where all the money goes at this point. I'm studying the budget every day to try to figure it out. That's that, and you're, you hit the nail on the head, Fletcher. The city doesn't know. It collects taxes. It doesn't know where it spends. There's 3,500 registered nonprofits in Knox County. Mm -hmm. The majority of that entertainment tax is going to nonprofits. The government is shoveling money out the door to nonprofits that should be exactly what you said. The ones collecting money from the public, a usage fee, rather than the government collecting it from all of us. And yeah, even at that. that, our city fails pretty often to apply for a lot of the federal grants that are available. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't apply for a lot of free money grants, as a city. Grant money from the federal government is borrowed money. It's not money. Uh, well, so we we'll use the VW grant. Let's we'll use the VW grant. Uh, or the VW grant, settlement. So settlement. We'll say settlement because it is a settlement. Um, I've, I've actually, Tennessee Clean Fuels had me come to their office recently. Um, and you all remember the issue with VW, how they put out the cars, the bad stuff. Um, well, the... There's a, there's a settlement you can apply for, and they actually pay for 75% of your city fleet to go electric. The 25% is actually less than a year's of gas and uh, service on our current fleet. So we could actually replace our whole fleet, basically, for the same cost of service for a year. And that being said, the amount of money we would save moving forward is crazy. No more fuel, and that's just city cars. And you know, I'm looking at all these cost savings that we can do to even to turn to some green energy. We put uh, solar panels on our parking meters, wild out our street lamps and street lights. Let's save money all around. Um, we can do better. 